Uh, so we don't have the lines yet. We just use this to kind of get in the ballpark of what they might be. Those average out to have Kentucky as an 11-point favorite with an 84% chance of winning. You may catch this game on the SEC Network at 4 Central. Before we break it down, a reminder, this preview presented by Bet Online with NFL playoffs here, the NBA season in full swing. Bet Online has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores with additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today, get in on the action, see the updated odds. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that is B L E A V, to get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online where the game starts. All right, Blake, let's start with you. Uh, George has played pretty well lately. Kentucky um, has been pretty consistent on the whole. You'll you'll see some lapses. Decided talent advantage in, in Kentucky's favor. We have talked about the young backcourt of, of Dillingham and Shepard. We've talked about Antonio Reeves and what he's done for this team. But, but George has hung in there. Um, putting itself in the verge of NCAA tournament consideration. In fact, might, might even be there at this point. Had uh, They hung on to beat the Vols last Saturday. But uh, K- Kentucky with the decided advantage here, but you can't overlook the Bulldogs based on the way they have played of late. No, you can't. I mean, they're, again, playing really well. They've got, as I said, uh, I guess it was Wednesday or whatever. They have what many teams the SEC don't have right now, and that's two road wins so far. Um, and so I think that's something that you look at in this game and say, all right, at least they've built up some confidence on the road. They've played some close games. I mean, all of their, all four of their SEC games have been decided by 10 points or, or fewer. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, 10 points against Arkansas. Uh, they won by seven at Missouri. Lost by six to Tennessee, won by five at South Carolina. So Georgia's been in some close games and, uh, again, built up some confidence in winning the majority of those. But Kentucky's different, as we know, especially at Rupp. Um, You know, that's a team that has a lot of confidence right now. Max pointed out in our reaction video uh, on Thursday that, you know, Kentucky's just putting up a lot of points in SEC play. They are scoring, scoring, and scoring some more. But Georgia's defense this year, I mean, it's been one of the strengths of this team, I mean, the biggest strength probably as to why they've had the success they've had because they're not a, a great offensive team, uh, but their defense has kept them in it. They've defended well on the perimeter. Um, obviously, you know, you just kind of look at the way they're playing on that side of the floor. So that's where this thing gets interesting. Georgia's going to have to have a great defensive game. Um, but, you know, we also just saw Kentucky go up against a great defensive team, Mississippi State, and – be just fine. So um, it's a challenge for the dogs. There's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're going to be stacked against the dogs here. I think the spread's going to be close to 10, somewhere around 10, maybe give or take a few points. Um, and I think that's fair. It's going to be, it's going to be tough for any team to come into Rupp and beat this team with how they've been, been shooting the ball. Uh, the thing that I'm, that I'm looking at is, and Blake, you kind of just touched on it, is Georgia has a very good perimeter defense. Uh, They've been holding, I think it's what, we've we've played four SEC games now, so not the biggest sample size when you're looking at like percentages and whatnot, but they're holding teams to 26.1% from three, and that's first in the conference. So, you know, there's there's just definitely some significance in that, the way that Georgia has been consistently defending the perimeter, but the way that this Kentucky team just absolutely flies can present some challenges defensively. Um, I really like the, I've been, if you've been watching us, you've been hearing me talk about the guard trio of Georgia and how much I like it between Thomas and Hill and Demery, just because you can kind of afford a guy to have an off night and ride the hot hand and who's aggressive that night, who's getting to the free throw line. Uh, the past few games, it's been, uh Silas Demery has been playing has been playing some of his best basketball so it's going to be a challenge yes Kentucky's going to be favored by three four possessions yes but this is probably the most consistent road team that we've seen through four games so this this definitely is a little bit more interesting than a usual Georgia Kentucky game has been in years past Max you hit on something interesting and and you kind of got where I was going to go next. Look, Kentucky is a double-digit 
favorite for a reason. It's playing right. in Lexington. On a neutral court, Kentucky was going to be favored anyway, but in Lexington, it gets even tougher. I think the one place where Georgia's got a chance is that three-point defense. Ken Pomeroy's got it 29.2%. I know you you cited the stats, which I presume were, were conference only, where they've conference been even only. better. Uh, Kentucky, the number nine three-point shooting team in the country, according to Ken Palm. Again, some people think three-point defense is, is is a little bit low. Georgia does have some athletes. They play hard. Yeah. It's not an elite defensive team, but Mike White's getting a lot out of this bunch. I think if this game is closer than the computers are telling us it is going to be, it is probably going to be either either something – I don't know that we're not talking about like Kentucky gets in massive foul trouble early or right. something along those lines, or it's maybe going to be that that three point defense where Georgia holds Kentucky down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's if when we're looking at paths to victory, right? That seems like the most likely path for Georgia. You know, they keep everything in front defensively, but also Kentucky just played one of their best defensive games, defending ball screens and, and whatnot. We might see with with it for a game that everyone's going to be saying oh my gosh points galore with with Kentucky they've been scoring 90 left and right i can see that there's a path to you know two teams that are playing some really good defense and this thing might be a little bit scrappy um and if there's a defense that can that can muck it up and and keep everything in front and and contest late and force tough jump shots it is this mike white defense so there's definitely some storylines that are you know that are in play other than just, oh, Kentucky's favored by 10. You know, I, th- I think it could get interesting here. Like, I mean, are we ready to make picks or are we like, are we continuing we, on? We, we can get there if you like. Well, I'm just, I don't have anything else to add. I mean, I, I think it's pretty straightforward with this game. I mean, I think I know who we're all going to pick. Um, So I just, I didn't know if anyone else had anything to add. I don't know if Chris, you wanted to, you know, hype up your, fantasy players or what i mean usually we spend 15 <laughs> minutes doing that so um no in all seriousness i kentucky has more pass to victory here uh kentucky doesn't need to make the three to win mm, they got dudes who can point. score in a variety of ways georgia needs to make the three to win because the numbers don't suggest they can score efficiently in other ways so i mean georgia's shooting 47 percent from two 281st nationally and we said going to the south carolina game what 43.5% of their points are coming from two, which is it's 345th nationally. So the majority of their points come from the three point line or the free throw line. Yep. Not going to get the calls in rep. Um, if you don't shoot it well, you're in big trouble. Although the defense will keep you in the game. I think, um, you know, you can kind of said muck it up and make it least make it a grind for Kentucky at times. But, but like I said, I just think Kentucky not. has way more path. They just have a better path to victory um, if they're not shooting the three as well. And so they can score in a variety of ways, and I think that's what beats Georgia in this one. Yeah, I mean, we keep talking up about the, the Georgia defense here and how that, you know, that's going to be what keeps them in it. But we just saw this Kentucky team just pick apart a top 10 defense nationally, put up 90 on them, and didn't shoot that well. So I mean, like we're we're looking optimistically at Georgia here, but the more I look into it, it's like, geez, how are they going to stop them when no one else has? You know, it's it's almost like you're just if you're if you're looking from a Georgia standpoint, you're just hoping for an off night kind of thing, you know, because no one has been able to do what they normally do defensively when they play this Kentucky team. So odds are stacked against the dogs, yeah, for sure. All right, gentlemen, it has been an offensive-oriented league this year. Lots of points. This is a league that's been known for defense, but this year even the teams that defend are getting a lead dog-type score, sometimes a couple, uh, and and Tennessee being my example here. I like Georgia's team. I like what Mike White is doing. Silas Demery's playing really well. Uh, Justin Hill had a big shot for them the other night. Melendez can score here and there. Jabri Abdurim may be their best player. But I look at Kentucky's roster, I don't see the same type of top-end, high-octane offensive firepower. Not that many teams have what Kentucky has. 
But you got Antonio Reeves who can go off for a lot of points, just as he did the other night. You've seen Rob Dillingham be the lead dog down the stretch of games. He can score in bunches. You got Trey Mitchell inside who's reliable. You've also got he gives you an efficient 12 games or 12 points a night in Reed Shepard. I just don't think that Georgia has got the firepower to keep up with Kentucky. Again, no, no shame because most teams don't. But that is ultimately why I think we are all going to go with the Wildcats in this one. We are previewing every single SEC game this weekend. Best way to get those, hit that subscribe button. We'll recap them probably Sunday morning when they're done. Anyway, uh, for Blake Lovell and Max Barr, I'm Chris Lee. This is Southeastern 14 presented by Vet Online.